Hi, my name is JR Tallman, and in this NetSuite tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to configure and use NetSuite's intercompany elimination functionality. Now, I am using a development account, and I'm using the administrator role. As always, please go through this in your Sandbox account before pushing and enabling in production. The first thing we're going to do to ensure that we can use NetSuite's automated intercompany elimination functionality is to ensure we have elimination subsidiaries set up in our environment. To do this, we can go to Setup, Company, and go down to Subsidiaries. Now, as you can see on my screen, I already have an elimination subsidiary set up between my parent company and my Germany and U.S. subsidiaries. Best practice is to have an elimination subsidiary set up between each parent-child relationship within your subsidiary structure. So in this case, I would also set up an elimination subsidiary between my Germany and my British subsidiary here, which I have not set up yet. To set up the elimination subsidiary, you're simply just going to go ahead and click on new subsidiary here. Give this a name. Typically, I give this the name of the parent company that this is associated with. So in this case, I can go ahead and set this up to my parent company, Germany subsidiary. Go ahead and mark this elimination checkbox off. And what that will do is it will gray out the country. It will gray out the currency and the addition. NetSuite will automatically take the currency of this parent subsidiary for our limit elimination. From here, you can simply give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to call this Germany-Elimination. Once that's done, go ahead and click on Save. And this elimination subsidiary is at no cost to your NetSuite licenses as long as the elimination box is checked off. So just keep that in mind here. So as you can see down below, this elimination subsidiary has been successfully created. Once we've ensured our elimination subsidiaries have been created within NetSuite, the next thing we're going to do is enable our automated intercompany management functionality. To do so, we're going to go to Setup, Company, and Enable Features. From here, underneath the Accounting sub-tab, there is going to be a couple options. The first one is going to be the Automated Intercompany Management. As you can see on my screen, it is already checked off and grayed out since I have enabled and used this functionality. So go ahead and check this Automated Intercompany Management. This will allow the automation of our elimination journal entries as part of the month end process, which you'll see in just a moment. In addition, I would also recommend to enable this Intercompany Framework. This is also checked off in my development instance. This will automatically create our Intercompany Customers and vendors, so we do not need to create those within NetSuite for each of the different relationships between our subsidiaries. If we do enable this functionality, it will require that we have multi-currency as well as multi-currency customer enabled. So it will give you that pop-up if you do try to enable this. In my account, both of those are already enabled with multi-currencies as well as the multi-currency customer. So once those are checked off, go ahead and save this underneath the enable features. The next step we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have our intercompany accounts payable as well as our intercompany accounts receivable set up as our GL accounts. So I'm going to go to list accounting and accounts here. And within this environment, I've already set up intercompany payable as well as an intercompany receivable account. So you can see here, I have an intercompany payable account as well as an intercompany receivable account. Now, the first thing you're going to know when you create these accounts within NetSuite is to set them up as type account accounts receivable as well as accounts payable. And the reason for this is NetSuite's automated intercompany functionality relies on each of those types. So do not set them up as other current assets or other current liability. In addition, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you only have one intercompany payable as well as one intercompany receivable account. NetSuite will automatically do the elimination based on the subsidiary that you're selecting with uh, with the different due to and due from. So it's only necessary to only have one account. And you're going to see where we're going to set these accounts up in different preferences, which will only allow for one intercompany payable as well as one intercompany receivable account. So if I go in here and go ahead and edit, you'll see this has a type of accounts payable, as I mentioned. Other thing to keep in mind is both of these accounts, when they are being set up, should have this eliminate intercompany transactions box checked off. So keep in mind the type as well as this checkbox should be checked off when you are setting up both of these accounts. So once we've enabled the feature, set up our subsidiaries, as well as have our intercompany payable and receivable account set up, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our intercompany preferences underneath setup, accounting, and intercompany preferences. Now on here, there's a couple things to note. The first one is you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set the receivable account as well as the payable account that we just looked at down below here. Again, this is only one account and it will restrict it based off the account type that we took a look at. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do underneath representing entities, assuming that you have the intercompany framework enabled, is you're gonna to wanna to make sure this automatically generate representing entities is checked off. And that will create our intercompany vendors as well as our intercompany customers, which you'll see here in just a moment. Go ahead and save that. And before you actually save that, I'm gonna go ahead and open this page where it says you can review generated representing entities on the subsidiary page. So I'm gonna go open that up and I'm gonna go ahead and save this. 
And now on my subsidiaries page, you can see here I have a representing vendor and a representing customer automatically created here. So I automatically generated these through NetSuite's functionality with this button. If so, if you are not seeing a representing vendor or a representing customer, go ahead and click this generate representing entities button off and it will automatically create those vendors and customers. Again, you do need to have multiple currency customer as well as the multiple currencies feature enabled. So if I go ahead and take a look at one of these vendors, as well as one of these customers, the thing to note on this is there is a represents subsidiary filled out here. So this was automatically set. I could create this manually if I didn't have NetSuite automatically generate this, but I would need to set the represents subsidiary and the subsidiary this goes along with. And you can see down below here, since we are using multiple subsidiaries with our vendors, as well as on the customer side, we have all of our subsidiaries. And then the next thing to note is on the financial sub tab here, it automatically generated my accounts payable with my intercompany account. Okay, so on the customer side, when I open that up, it's gonna be the same thing. My represents subsidiary has been set. My primary subsidiary is set. All my subsidiaries set down below here. And then underneath the financial sub tab here, I have the opposite way with my intercompany receivable. Again, I didn't create either of this vendor or customer. It was generated automatically by NetSuite with the generate representing entities. But you can create those manually if you do not en enable the intercompany framework. The next thing we're gonna do before we actually generate an advanced intercompany journal entry and walk through the process of how NetSuite's automated intercompany elimination works is to set some accounting preferences. So underneath setup, accounting, and accounting preferences, we're gonna to go to our items and transactions tab here, and we're gonna scroll down here, and there's gonna be two fields that say default ICJE auto balance receivable account, and the opposite here with our payables account. So on this drop down, go ahead and select your receivables, as well as our payables account that we set up previously. And what this will do is it will use these accounts for our auto balance functionality when we're creating an advanced intercompany journal entry, which you're gonna see in the next step here. So this is pretty cool functionality. So do set the accounts right here. Otherwise you can't take advantage of it, which you'll see. All right, and go ahead and save this. Now, once that's saved, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to transactions, financial, and click on make advanced intercompany journal entries. Now, once I'm on the advanced intercompany journal page, I'm gonna go ahead and select my from subsidiary up the top here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and select my parent company as my subsidiary, and we'll use the parent company and let's say my Germany company as the do from and the do to. I'll go ahead and select my parent company up here. Go ahead and fill the information that you would normally would up at the top with your journal entry. And then down below here is the key when you're creating advanced intercompany journal entry and going through the elimination process. So NetSuite requires that you have two rows for each subsidiary with an advanced intercompany journal entry. So I had to have two rows here with my parent company as well as two rows with my Germany company since that's the example that I'm running through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my parent company here and I'm gonna go ahead and use an account that I don't have any activity in. So you can see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and use insurance expense, and I'm going to go ahead and put a debit here. Again, feel, feel free to fill out any additional information along the row here, if necessary or required for your segmentation. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my Germany subsidiary, and I'm going to use that same account, and we'll use a credit. Now, since we did fill out those accounting preferences on that previous page, which is our auto balance functionality, what's missing here is our intercompany payable as well as our intercompany receivable. But next, we will add that automatically if we click this auto balance button. So if I go and click this auto balance button, it's going to say auto balancing. And you're going to see in just a moment, NetSuite's going to automatically create both of those lines. Bingo. So it created the intercompany payable line with our generated represents entity, right? So this is required to have on our intercompany payable line, but NetSuite generated that automatically because it's creating those entities. Otherwise, if you're creating them manually, you would need to go ahead and select that here with the name. And then remember when we set up those accounts, we do have both of those accounts set to eliminate. So it created that automatically on both sides for our parent company and Germany side. This also works when you do CSV imports. So if you just do two lines here and you do the imports, as long as you have the preferences enabled, it will automatically do the auto balance functionality on the import. If I scroll over to the right hand side, there are some additional fields if you do wanna change the exchange rate since this is between different currencies, you'll see the exchange rates on the right hand side, but it is using the spot rate or the current rate of today's date, in this case, September 21st, as my exchange rate. Okay, so once that's created, I'm gonna go ahead and save this advanced intercompany journal. Perfect, now my advanced intercompany journal has been saved and it is approved. All right, before we run NetSuite's automated intercompany elimination as part of the month end process, what I want to do is I want to take a look at the income statement and validate that that insurance expense is on both of these subsidiaries. So if I go ahead and take a look at our income statement, 
for September 2025 year. I'm going to change my column to be subsidiary and I'm going to go and refresh this. You're going to see then here, I have 500 on my parent company. And then again, because of the currency, it's not exactly 500, it is 461.32. So you can see that is on both of these subsidiaries. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to set up accounting and manage accounting periods. I'm going to go down to the checklist for September 2025 and click on the little viewfinder. Now, as part of this checklist, you can see that I have a status of close for all these different tasks. The purpose of this video is to go through the eliminate intercompany transaction task. So that's the task that I am on. So I'm going to go ahead and click go to task on this eliminate intercompany transactions. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and click on run intercompany elimination. Now, before I run this and click on save for the period, go ahead and give anything that is required as far as your segmentation go with a class, department, location, or any custom segments. That is not required in this instance, so I'm going to click on save for my intercompany eliminations. Now, once it has been saved, you can go ahead and click on the status sub tab here, and you'll see that it's in progress. And now, once I click refresh again, it does say complete. So if I click on the complete hot link here, it will take me into my process records here. And what this will show us is journal that I created was journal 24. So if I go into journal 24, this is the one that I created. And you can see down below here, this is the existing one that I created and saved. And then as part of the automated elimination process, it created journal 25. Now, if I go to journal 25, you can see here the status says enter company elimination. It is tagged to my elimination parent subsidiary. And then down below here, the 500 was kept at my enter company payable, right? And it has one row for my source transactions since I just did one source with this. Enter company receivables down below here. Remember, this is only one currency with this particular elimination subsidiary. And then the rest goes to this automated account that NetSuite creates, which is the CTA dash elimination account. Right, so you can see here, any currency translation goes to this account that NetSuite automatically generates. This is different than the CTA account. It's specifically CTA-elimination. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at our balance sheet as our intercompany account should be zeroed out. So similar to what I did on our income statement underneath reports, financial, and balance sheet here, I'm gonna go ahead and run this by subsidiary for September, refresh, in my intercompany receivable account, you can see the 461.32, right? It went to my elimination and it is a total of zero. So it should be zero at the end of the day here. And same thing with my intercompany payable, it nets it out to zero with the automated intercompany elimination. If you do not see this at zero, typically then there's accounts that have not been set to eliminate on the journal. Remember, we do have that eliminate checkbox on our automated intercompany elimination on both sides of the entry for intercompany payable and intercompany receivable. So typically there's only one side of the transaction that got eliminated. This concludes on how to configure and use NetSuite's automated intercompany elimination. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe and comment down below if you do have any questions. Thank you.